Welcome to another inverted access stream. Today we're taking a look at the swindle from Curve Studios and Curve Studios is the publisher. The developer is, uh, I don't know what his developer is. It's Dan Marshall. He made the game Ben There, Dan That. Um, size 5 Games is what they're called, Size 5 Games. And uh, it is part RPG, part roguelike, and part stealth. Um, they say it's a bit of platforming too. I, I question that. There's not a whole lot of platforming. Um, but it's set in the London in the 80s. You're a thief, and like the British government has this new device that's going to crack down on all, you know, thievery and robbing and all that fun stuff. Um, so you have one, and it's going to be activated in 100 days. So you have 100 days to pull off enough heists to be able to actually steal the device that they're going to put in place. So it's a fun, clever little idea for a game. <laughs> Name dropper. Well, I have 20, 22 heists successful at least. So there are six levels, but you actually can only start with the one. Started. There we go. This definitely has a cyberpunk style. Um, not in love with the artwork. It's just so brown. Like I mean, look right here. Is everything is like a shade of brown? I just don't love it. Um, it's not my favorite. But besides that, the game's great. You can do little like jumps off the wall and stuff like that. You don't move very fast to start with. Let's get started. Basically the goal is, you, and these are procedurally generated as well, which is very common for roguelikes. Um, but each level is just kind of set up differently. You need to break in and steal as much money as you can. Oh, I don't even have the hack skill yet. I have to buy a hack skill so I can hack computers. That's where you get the vast majority of your money from. <laughs> Not racist at all, only commenting on the color of the game. And so all the enemies are actually robots, which is kind of funny to me. I guess it's how it explains you bashing the hell out of these guys. Without it being quite so awful that you're killing police officers. The skills continue through your 100 heists. Um, if you, whether you win or you lose, after your 100 heists, you start over brand new. Skills reset and all that stuff. So you can slowly upgrade over the 100 heists, but there's nothing that's, there's no absolute permanent upgrades that will continue on forever. I was playing another roguelike called Flame Over that actually has permanent upgrades, which is one of the first roguelikes I've played that has like completely permanent upgrades. It's kind of strange. It's 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 a unique premise, Jay, for sure. It's a little bit different, but it, it needs to be, you know. The roguelikes are getting extremely popular. You can see their field of view is that little yellow thing. Pretty easy to see, really nice. Um, they don't see each other's dead bodies, which is awesome. Later enemies can hear you walking, but these early ones don't hear you walking. As long as you, as long as you yourself don't appear in that field of view, you don't have anything to worry about, which is really nice in regards to stealth, because stealth isn't actually my favorite thing in the world. Yeah, Rogue Legacy had permanent upgrades. You're right. Um, right now, probably flame over a little bit better, but I do need to try and actually beat this game. It gets really hard, which is kind of frustrating down and stop being an idiot. No time limit. Um, if you get caught, then the, the cops come after you and they, they'll attack you. I'm pretty sure they're invincible, but they give you a few seconds to get away. So besides that, no real time limit. Flame over is way fuglier. Flame over is not particularly attractive. But I do not, I mean, this game I think has 
a more unique art style, like they put more effort to, into it than Flame Over ever did. Flame Over soundtrack is also kind of bad. Um, but I don't like this game's art style that much either. I like the gameplay. So I've finished swindling this house, just returned back to the airship, it'll give me my stats. Um, so I only stole 10% of the cash from that level because I wasn't able to hack into the computer yet. Um, I need $100 before I can start hacking, so I might as well just run another heist right now. After this one, assuming I survive, I should be okay. Move slowly by holding L1. Not a big deal right now, none of the enemies can actually hear me move. I think it's not until the third level till you run into that. It's actually really obnoxious. The game, the game gets hard. It gets really hard. See now the stealth is not too bad. It does get much tougher as well. Um, I didn't realize it had a whole lot of stealth when I started playing it, um, but it does. But mercifully, it's not too too bad. Not really the biggest aspect. And so that's just it. That's the house. You can't do anything on the other side of the house. There's nothing there. You just have a randomly generated house to rob from each time. Yeah, flame over is great for sure. Nothing against flame over at all. It is not is not the best looker. PS4 version's coming out. That'll be fun. I would actually play through it again if it has a separate trophy list. I mean, yeah, this is the whole thing, but let me get let's get a little bit deeper. Like, I mean, these are easy levels, so you can rack up the money real quick. So that's two days. So I have 98 days left to beat the game. I need to buy a hacking skill, and that's all I can afford right now. So this, here's your whole list of upgrades, and you can see there's actually a ton of them. They look really expensive, like this, see this one wants 80,000, which is actually a lot no matter what, but you start earning way, way, way more money fairly quickly. Abilities, tools, goggles, and miscellaneous, so now I have the hack skill, I can get a little bit more going. Hack objects by holding triangle. You can already see there's a few more guys. Each day it does get a little bit tougher. Some days actually will get a bit easier, but for the most part it gets tougher over time. There's also tons of spikes right there. Ugh. So yeah, not, not quite as much action as Phantom Breaker had. Definitely a bit of stealth where you do have to be careful and being overly cautious usually pays off, even if it does take a bit longer. So yeah, I'm trying to think of stuff to talk about for you guys. Ugh, this sucks. better yeah one shot death um i won't die if i walk into their field of view what will happen is that they'll be alerted or they'll alert the cops and then i'll have a few seconds to get away otherwise the cops will come after me um, but then also they can they'll start attacking me as well so they don't they don't move that much faster but they will attack once you've alerted them so you don't die just when you alert them, which is nice. I'm gonna die. There's no way I can make that jump. What a shitty line, what a shitty level. Yep, 
so I couldn't even get to the computer. The joys of procedural generation. Sometimes things end up inaccessible. I mean, it would have been accessible with uh, if I had more upgrades, but it's only the third level. So new level, and when you die, you actually get a new thief. So my thief is dead, and then I just get a new one. So that's a lot like Rogue Legacy, except it doesn't have any of the fun, like traits or anything like that. Oh, there's nothing in here. Let's see if we can't get the computer to hack it. I mean, it's not that cool, but I'll get way more money than I've been getting. There's a computer right there. Good. Because everything's brown, I couldn't see the brown door. You do have to push buttons when you're hacking things. It's kind of obnoxious. You hold triangle, then you have to push like up, right, left, down. Um, not too bad with computers. You can hack things like landmines that, that will blow up if you push the wrong button. And uh, some computers will activate the alarm if you push a wrong button, so... There are some things that it actually matters that you push the right button. Um, best strategy is don't get seen. There's not a whole lot more strategy than that other than planning your way in. You'll see when I start getting some of these upgrades that you can like really kind of tweak the way you play a little bit. Um, the maps are small. They get a bit big. They 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 do, they do get bigger, but not still not huge. But you're not actually redoing them because this is actually a separate level. That's why I died because that level I was in, it didn't matter whether I died or survived. I guess I could have got 40 bucks, but that's not a big deal in a grand scheme of things. Um, but but I mean, yeah, you can definitely put a decent amount of time in. It says the same thing. There's four. Well, there's four cops down here. It's not worth it for that one little wad of cash. It's better to just run out and not be seen. So that so that run I got fourteen hundred and seventy dollars, which is much better. Let's see if there's anything I can buy. So I need 2,000 for a double jump. Five thousand to improve hacking. Wait, no, that uh, oh, that opens up locked doors. That's for a second level. That's right. So four thousand. That one's worthless. Tools, so there's bombs. There is steam, which is extremely useful. Bugs, which are super useful. I actually need to save up for one of those. They're actually a bit gimped in there. They're a bit overpowered in this game right now. And this is how you actually buy new levels. I should probably actually save up for that second level after I can get the lock pick. How much is the lock one? So the first time you play this, you're going to just kind of be guessing with the upgrades and figuring out which ones are useful and which ones aren't. You need about $9,000 before it makes sense to move on to the next level. It's not, I mean, it's not really leveling. It's more upgrades, but then there's just five different levels. Pardon me, six different levels to play. So we got a new thing already that little flying robot thing which it can hurt you but it's far more dangerous just that it sees you it doesn't have the best aim it usually aims at the ground but you don't need to look at already eight hundred and sixteen from that one. Oh, what the hell I don't think I'm gonna be able to make that jump Try breaking out the top of us. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get up there. There we go, sweet. Forgot you can do that. Some people compared it a little bit to Mark of the Ninja, if you've ever played that. Um, it is a tiny bit like that in the stealth area, 2D stealth. Kind of gives you the point of views of your enemies, which is nice and helpful. That's for sure. Make sure not to the spikes. So the hacking the computers, the later levels, the actual wads of cash that are on the ground are worth a little bit more, but it, it's really all about hacking the computers. And that's it. First level has usually one to two computers. The first world has one to two computers per level. Um, they'll get to be as many as four in the later areas. Shouldn't take me too much longer to get to the second area at least. I guess I can kill everyone. I'm not sure if you get bonuses for killing everyone, but when it's less easy, you might as well. And there we go. I'm doing a lot better this run than my first time. Um, it's not quite that easy. I'm making it look a bit easier than it will be on your first run, getting used to the controls and stuff like that. So I have four grand in savings. I was actually trying to save up for about nine grand. And then I'll move on to the next level. So everyone's pretty quiet now. Anything else cool going on in the world? Bunch more spikes that are gonna throw me off. That's wonderful. Man, I don't remember so many spikes in the first area last time. Not fun to watch, that's definitely possible. It's fun to play. Ugh. I guess that's true. Stealth games can be a pain in the ass to watch on Twitch. There's a new enemy, he's slower, but has a larger field of view. It's definitely not a low attention game. I mean, I'm still in the first world, which is kind of part of it. Is there another computer over there? When was this released? I think July 31st? I'm scared to try and make that jump over those spikes. Kind of feels like... Whoops. So here's what happens when you get seen. Everything goes red. You have a few seconds to escape before the cops show up. There's also fall damage, my favorite thing in the world. That's why they ride down so slowly. But if you do that, if you have any sort of money you want to save, you're going to want to actually just bail out. Part of the boringness to watch, I would put on the colors. Colors drive me insane. The lack of color in this game drives me insane.
Montreal. Is it pretty much just avoid the robot? I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty much don't get seen. Um, that's the goal of the game. It's what I mean. You're a you're a thief, so the goal is to avoid them. Um, easier said than done, I think. This first level is not terribly hard anymore. I mean, trust me, I fuck, almost died there. Uh, I had quite a bit of issues with this the first time I played it. Even the even the, the basically the starter practice world is rather tough. Ooh, I'm lucky that I didn't die there. That was stupid. I should have. Slow. Yeah, it's slow. Like, I mean, any game you have to play where you're waiting, like have to wait for this guy to walk back, those never tend to be the best games for streaming. What was the other game me and Monkey were talking about? Yeah, you can do that for sure. It's it's actually easier for me to like read the chat in this game because I can just stand in a safe spot. I don't even have to pause it. Versus like Phantom Breaker, where you know I had to pay attention to what was going on the screen most of the time. Rocket League, where you can like almost never look away from the screen except for in between rounds. Um, what was the other game we were talking about? Oh, Cube. I streamed Cube last week, and I think it went okay. But puzzle games like that too are really hard to stream when you don't know the solution when you stand around for a while. So, I, I fully understand that. So, I need another thousand before I get the second level unlocked. Yeah, I remember that, Jay. How'd that turn out? Um, I do wait, I only wait in Spelunky when the actual ghost is chasing me. But not as much as this, I guess. I don't know. There's definitely no stealth in Spelunky. I'm glad you like the music. Uh, I never really noticed it one way or the other, but I'm glad to hear you liked it. <laughs> she blocked you on Instagram. I'm sure it wasn't totally random. Oh, don't see me. Shit. And most people don't find Spelunky any fun to watch, George. Come on, look the other way, asshole. Huh, that's weird. Yeah, she... You're not missing out on a whole hell of a lot there. Come on, you fucking robot. Um, it was damaged, but I'm swear, I swear I've seen them turn before even when damaged. She'll cherish that hoodie you look behind. I don't think Jay would ever do that. These slow early levels are actually a godsend to me because the, the, the game does really ramp up by like the third world. There's some crazy hard enemies and stuff. There's got to be another computer down here. Maybe there's not.
it's interesting this game like there's a lot of things like like I, when i was first playing i was like man i'd like to be able to look down and see what's down below me you know and you can't do that from off, right off the bat but basically everything you'd ever want to do in this game is available as an upgrade so they, they really did get a lot of the things you'd want to do in the game you just can't do them right from the start there's not another computer in here i may have to do another run Nope, I have enough. So you return to the airship, that's where you do your upgrades in between each run. So I'm gonna buy the ability to unlock doors, which appear in the second level. And I'm going to buy the second level. You basically have to buy clearance, security clearance into the next level into all the next levels. Like, the last level cost $400,000 to get into. So, now I'm in the warehouse district. I doubt the level's gonna be all that much more exciting. It actually makes you go slower as you keep going forward in the game. So now I can, like, hack doors. Well, I, you have to hack the doors, I should say. Enemies take more damage. Uh, he's gonna turn around. I wanna deal with that. There's actually a trophy, the gold trophy in this game is for beating the entire game with the same guy you start with, so that means you don't die once. Which, to me, seems pretty tough. I guess someone has already gotten it. I wonder if it's maybe the developer who did it. But, yeah, it seems crazy to me. See you, Therm. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. And, and to be fair, I mean, I don't know how many streams you watch. A lot of people will watch the stream, will have the streams on without really watching them. I do the same thing myself a lot of the time. Fuck. <laughs> oh, he falls off ledges apparently, I didn't know that. So that's a mine. It's really annoying. You can hack it. Or you can trigger it and run away real quick. Mines are one of my least favorite items. Enemies, whatever you want to call it in the game. I gotcha. See you, man. view right there. I can get back out in time. 
Come on, get up there. There you go. Man. This place is bigger than I remember. Shit. Good. See what I can buy with 70, 7100 bucks. Speed up hacking, that's pretty useful. Increase the amount of money, that one's really useful. Up and down is useful. Bombs are kind of useful. Steam is useful. These bugs are useful, but I can't afford it yet. Goggles, that's super useful. And the next, to get to the next level, I need 25 grand. Let's go ahead and increase the hacking speed once. So I have 91 days left to beat the game. So I'm about 10% through a full run. So it's a, actually a longer run than a game like Spelunky or something else. both of those things. Oh, get up there, dude. Platforming is not a thousand percent precise, unfortunately. Unfortunately, so it can be frustrating. See, so I've bought new upgrades and all of a sudden there's a million tougher enemies, which sucks, but that's what's expected, I guess. Whoops, Tyler! Steal this one and get the hell out of here. That was stupid. I think I can buy something for that. Slow down the cops, although they haven't been going super fast so far. Let's go ahead and buy that. Police response is delayed. Oh, I need to start saving for those bugs too. They're super useful. That's what I'll buy next. Or is it 25 grand? Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see how much it costs. best to like survey the whole area if you ever run into a room that like looks too tough to deal with.
All the way down. Holy shit. Where are the computers, man? Can't find a single one. Those cameras that go back and forth are probably my least favorite enemy. They seem simple, but they are not, because you cannot kill them. Fuck. Right under the spikes. The cameras that go back and forth that are on the ceiling, you cannot kill them unless you blow up the ceiling that's above them or you deactivate them in the control panel room. The, the, which neither are super fun to do. It's one you have to buy an upgrade for. The other one you have to use bombs. So yeah, those those cameras that go back and forth are really, really annoying. Kill a shopkeeper. Wish there was a shopkeeper to kill. I'm so glad I spent so much time going down that corridor for no reason. It is nice that the game doesn't have any sort of time limit unless you trigger the cops. So you can kind of take your time. Um, nothing else over there. So this is the control panel room that would actually kill those overhead cameras, but I don't have the ability to hack it yet, so there's nothing I can do. But yeah, you have to find that overhead room, that, that room in every area once you have it. These things are super annoying. So it's a worm with spikes on it, so you can walk through it no problem, but you can't jump on it. I learned that the hard way. This, this house is actually much, much easier than the last one so far, so sometimes it's just like a lot of roguelike games. Some runs are not too bad and other ones are miserable. It totally depends. I can't even get down there, can I? How do I get in there? I don't have any bombs. Not gonna happen, I don't think. I was hoping to get that third computer. Unless I can go in over here, but I don't think I can. Yep, I'm not getting in there. Kind of lame when they fence them off. Oh no, I can get in there. I take it back. Oops. I should probably shut up. I didn't see that cough I should have waited. Now I get to wait out here. myself kind of bad on that one because I'm not going to be able to jump down without landing on that thing with spikes on it. Fuck. Yeah, there's no other way out. It'd be too risky. That was stupid. God damn it. So I left like $2,000, $3,000 on the table. But live and learn.
How much is the bug? It's 25 grand, huh? Come on, asshole. I only get a few seconds to try and hit you. Like a throwing projectile would have been really cool, like a knife or something, but there's nothing like that in the game. Definitely, definitely, definitely have to take your time. Mines are annoying because once in a while you'll get too close to them to try and hack them and you'll actually set them off. And then you are screwed. This guy's actually going to blow himself up on the mine. Eventually. Blue, nice one, pancakes. I don't get it. So, Ren, how is uh? Alien breed coming. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's still dark. You're right. It's it's not all brown. It's all blue. I am a liar. You're right. Awful. The single player is not that bad. Are you just talking about the co op? I need to figure out what I want to buy next. Definitely don't need another double jump. Don't need that yet. Okay. Yeah, the single player wasn't too bad. It was frustrating at times, but it wasn't the worst. I never played the co-op. I had it on 360 and I didn't know anyone else to play with. Anyone in the thread actually good at that game?
pro level. Hey, pancakes. Everyone else thinks this game is boring, so hopefully you enjoy watching it. Yeah, let's get that extra money one. That'll pay itself off pretty quick. So looking down in the bug, I could use the bombs. And that one. Man, I need a lot of money still. Um, most of the upgrades are passive and just work as soon as you buy them. Some you actually, some are like tools that you actually have to use. Like being able to hack, right, what I'm doing right now is actually an upgrade. Um, so you'll see that that one obviously is one that you use. You just, you just buy, you do the workbench, you buy, you know, basically, whatever you want with the money that you steal from the heists. Most of the money on the heists is made from hacking computers. If you don't escape with your money, you don't get any of it. So that's why I have to run away, because the cops are coming. But I did leave a computer there. Kind of need to evaluate everything. You know, make your plan of action. Shit. There we go. It is a pretty dark game too to watch on the stream. It's much brighter on my computer, on my TV. Not as bright as it should be. It's still a dark game, but the stream makes it look very, very dark. Let's see if we can't get through here. Man, all that for one computer. There's not even a second one lying around. Lame. This is called the swindle. 
I don't really like the name. They probably just ran out of names. Like the thievery or something. So yeah, it's called the swindle. Actually, the name Phantom Breaker could kind of fit for this game. Come on, turn around. Not much of a haul on this one, but there's not much else I can do about it. It's a surprisingly addictive game. It's like, it's like, oh, just one more run, you know, just one more upgrade, oh, I just want to use this upgrade, then I'll be ready to go. I'm not gonna bother. Get out of here. See, I only stole 44% of the cash, that sucks. Let's go ahead and get that bug. There's like an overpowered like hacking bug that gets you a lot of extra money. Costs 25 grand now, but I think that's what I'm gonna save for. Um, I mean, the game will save your progress. It's it's much longer than Spelunky in that, like, I have 100 days to do all this thieving that I'm doing. Um, after that, the, the British government has a new... I'm in London in the 1800s. The British government has a new device that's, like, going to stop all thieves, you know, all robberies. And they're going to put that in place in 100 days. So I have 100 days to do as much stealing as I can, and the goal is to actually steal enough to be able to steal that device. That's the end goal. Um, so I have 100 days worth of stuff I can put in. You know, I can buy upgrades with the money I steal and stuff like that. Um, but after those 100 days, you start over, like in Spelunky. So the upgrades last longer than in something like Spelunky, but it's still fairly similar. The stream had slow down. <laughs> Can't even imagine you would notice on this. It's like right here, you know, this is boring to watch, it's even boring to play, but I can't risk not hitting him. This guy's already gonna be enough of a pain in the ass to get to. Because he takes three shots. But I gotta get that. Huh, interesting. Slow down because your voice slow down. I don't know, it's possible. 
see, and I fucked myself from jumping back over here. Ah, oh, there is a come on, I can't get to it anyway. Those stupid worms with the spikes on their back are a huge pain in the ass. Here still. I forgot I didn't go this way. There's just too much shit that's gonna get me in trouble. I'll leave now. At least I didn't die. Hey Gator. Yeah, you can't have more than like two tabs of porn open at the same time, Ren. Unless you have a really top of the line laptop. That doesn't count as su successful. I stole 